In 2011, 12.8 million vehicles were sold in the United States. This represents all vehicles, so retail as well as fleet. We know from other work that we have done that 41% of customers didn't consider any other vehicle when they came into the marketplace. So when you multiply one number by the other, this means that 5.2 million vehicles are essentially already spoken for. That is, those customers are essentially off the table and don't have the opportunity of being conquested by other manufacturers. So let's play with the numbers a little further. If we know 12.8 million were sold in the US in 2011, and we take away from that number 5.2 million that we know are the customers who are already spoken for, this means that 7.6 million customers are in play. That is, those customers that have the opportunity of being conquested by all manufacturers. Let's take a look at another important market. Let's look at Canada. In Canada in 2011, 1.6 million vehicles were sold. Now, we know of this number, again from other work that we've done, that 35% of customers didn't consider anything else when they came into the marketplace. This means that 557,000 customers are already spoken for. Now, by the same logic I just showed you in the US example, if 1.6 million vehicles were sold in 2011 and 557,000 of these are already spoken for, this means that in Canada, about 1 million customers are in play. That is, 1 million customers that have the potential of being conquested by all manufacturers. So what does this tell us? What are some of the possible implications here? Well, one of the ones that jumps right to the top of the list is that we need to consider the differences in markets, uh, in specifically in this case, between Canada and the United States. In Canada, uh, based on the numbers I just showed you, there are more customers in play, if we want to use that term, uh, compared to the United States. So certainly in planning, especially from a North American perspective, uh, we need to keep this in mind. The second point, and this is a somewhat obvious one, but the numbers back it up, is it obviously is a lot more efficient from a sales standpoint to hold on to existing customers. It's a lot cheaper to do that as well. So therefore, when we look at that percentage of those customers who didn't consider any other vehicle when they came into the marketplace, we want that number to be as high as, as possible, simply because these are customers who already have a predisposition to us, and therefore, not exactly we don't have to sell to them, but it's a lot easier to sell to those folks compared to other customers who don't have that affinity toward our brand. The last implication, which I think the data points out, is the fact that when you're planning for 2012, uh, the example we just showed you was obviously done at the industry level. I'd encourage you to do this type of analysis, but on a segment by segment basis, basically to try and understand for all of your segments in, in which you compete, how loyal are our customers and how many of those customers are at play or we have the chance of being conquested. Uh, just from experience, I can tell you that uh, customers in the subcompact and compact segment uh, tend to be less loyal. Uh, so therefore, we have a greater chance of bringing those into, uh, into the fold. Uh, on the other extreme, uh, customers uh, typically in the more of the full-size pickup or near full-size pickup uh, segments uh, tend to be more loyal. So therefore, in allocating funds across the product line, uh, obviously how loyal our customers are could dictate whether or not we do a loyal, loyalty strategy or conversely, those who are more at play could be more in line for a conquest type strategy. So I hope you find uh, this interesting. Please let me know. And again, thanks for uh, dropping by theRideBlog.com. Thank you.